I find a subtle beauty in the fact that I'm listening to this $8,000 headphone amp on $40 headphones, listening to a song called Forever Broke from Yoko Kano from Cowboy Bebop. But that's just how it goes. So I'm Zios Pantera here from Z Reviews and also Inner Fetish. Check out my Inner Fetish channel for IMs. Oh my God. Um, Zal, Zal, two dots above the A because Germany. This is the HM1 Reference Headphone Mixing Amplifier, and it's way too much money. I have to, you know, when you renew your vows for like you got married and you're like 10 years later, renew your vows. So, uh, 10 years ago, roughly, I, I gotta go the exact birthday of this channel. I swore to do a channel where I'd fucking yell at people for spending too much fucking money on audio. And the problem is, you get used to it. You get used to like, oh, it's only a $500 this, and only a $600 that, and all of a sudden that's the new normal. And it takes something like this, something like this and the Nautilus. By the way, same owner. <laughs> this and the Nautilus, so like 9,000 and 8,000. And it's just infuriating that this sort of money is still around to, to, in, in like the sales perspective. Not saying that this isn't worth eight thousand. If you broke it down, if you went to the factory and you watched them map it out and how the how they're soldering it together and the build precision, I'm sure you could figure out eight thousand dollars. But fuck that, it's just music. I mean, like, there's a line. I have a line. I have a line, and this has crossed it. And no matter how good it is, is never going to be worth that, ever, ever. Um. Ever. So just with that in mind, let's now review the Zal HM1. Headphone mixing reference amplifier mixing mixing. Yeah, there. Okay, so where do we begin? I guess this is the box. This is the mains adapter, which I have plugged in with a very, very nice $15 Amazon power cable to a power strip with like nine other things in it. So that's I'm sure that's the reason it doesn't sound good, ZS. It sounds good. That's the thing, though. It sounds good. I've just managed to figure out how to make things sound this way with a mere $900 speaker amp. But then there's also... Th I, we're getting to it. So this box is the first thing you do, and you get 100, 110, 120, 220, 230, 240. you got to get a coin out, and you got to pick your mains level. So anywhere from Japan to... I don't know where it has 240... I know 220 is a lot of normality in Europe and stuff, but you pick it and then you have this monster connector and I, I'm gonna have to unplug it at some point to show you how many pins go from here to here because it's like 15, it's wild. The box itself, I can, is it, do I have the ability to lift? No, nope, nope, definitely don't. Um, two inputs in the back and you get to choose either XLR for that input or RCA, not both. Even though there's a switch that says balanced and unbalanced, you have to only use one because it mixes the two together because it's a mixing amplifier, but it's also a mixing amplifier because I could do that instead of choosing one or the other. Um, oh, London Grammar's playing. So, all right, real, real simple. Here's how I've been testing this. You've seen it on my desk for fucking weeks. You've seen reviews and it's like, this thing was in the corner with the, A9, with the LA90 on top of it. And you usually see these green lights on it because those are the direct. These three knobs, go over the knobs. Power button, it's a white backlit thing. We've got the Zal logo lit up. You've got a switch for Class A versus Class A servo. Two different modes. So Class A servo is much more cl clean on paper where it's like 0. .0003. And Class A is just 0. .003. <laughs> Garbage. I prefer it on Class A. We'll talk about that more in a bit. Two volume knobs. I like this feature. I fucking love this feature. I'd love to see this feature on like a $600 headphone amplifier. Remember that price range? Volume knob for the input A, a volume knob for the input B, and then you switch them on with that. So you can leave that up. You can leave that down. Uh, the two sources I'm using, I should I point that out. Own S8 DAC, not the Magic DAC. I wasn't using Magic, but I pulled out the old Own S8, and then I've got this Black Ice Glass FX Tube DAC 
which I'm running RCA. Because if you're going to run two different decks, run some fucking wild ones. So I've got this Black Ice Audio Glass FX Tube deck, which actually has tubes in it for the amplification circuit out into this. And I've got that, which I've always loved it, but it has a little weird jank. Like, it takes forever to go from 44 to 96. So you have no audio for like six seconds. But I love that amp, or that DAC. And I just don't use it enough. And I actually had the, for the longest time, I had a Gashelli Labs and the Aries 2 hooked up to this. So I thought I'd give it a little bit of, of a different flavor for this, this thing. Um, the LA-90 is still there. We're gonna use the LA-90 as the pre-out source. The, we're gonna preamp the LA-90 with this because the owner is gonna do that with his Nautilus. I don't know what DAC he's got in mind. Probably a fucking hollow may or something. Um, but either way, I'm going with these two DACs into this. And then this actually has a... We're going to go... Walk, let's finish the front. Can we finish the front? Class A, Class A servo. Volume knob for input A, volume knob for input B, input B. You can pick either or or both. And it'll actually play both sources at the same time without damaging anything. You get a switch here that is line out, both line out and headphone out, or just headphone out. You get a four pin XLR and a quarter inch, no 4.4, so I had to whip out my adapter there, my uh, double helix adapter that they sent me, which is kind of nice actually. Um, Plug that back in. You get a balanced knob, which is not full balance, not full left and full right. It's just just to sort of actually close my eyes and sort of like try to put it in mono and try to adjust. And it, it's like, I'm always like one or two notches over and then I change headphones and I'm two notches the other way. So it's a very fine adjustment balance knob. And then these three knobs, which on their own, like if there was just a box that made these three knobs happen, $1,500, easy. Easily $1,500 for what those fucking knobs do. So where we take that into account that it is an entire everything else and then those, so bass knob, treble knob, and then this knob, which I'm gonna put my camera closer even though I know I can't see it. There's a circle, then two circles intersecting, then two circles not intersecting. It defaults here, it has one, two notches to the right. It has one, two, three notches to the left. You could hear things relay clicking in the back. And what that knob does is sound stage. For those of you who don't know what soundstage is, I've described it on most headphones. Like a headphone has a soundstage. You put on a headphone and either sound that the sounds are narrow or a little bit wider or super wide or super fucking narrow. That's what determines a headphone. For like a super fun headphone, the uh, Sendy Apollo's over there, $500. Wide as fuck soundstage, out to the walls, to the windows and the walls until the sweat drips down your ears. <laughs> I made a joke. Uh, terrible headphones, by the way. Just like you can't, like there's no detail retrieval. Everything's just super wide and that's it. That's all it's got going for it. Earns a place in my wall. Um, other headphones, very fucking narrow. Uh, what are the Audio-Technica 70s? The 8A70X, the one that, but they're monitoring ones. Narrowest headphone I ever heard. Literally, it sounds like it's playing in your ear and not anywhere past it, fuck. This can actually tune from all the way left is mono. So if you turn this all the way to the left, you now have mixed left and right channel. And the best way I could test this out, as far as I could tell, was I put on the headphone demo left, right noise. You know what I'm talking about, hold on. Repeat track. This. Right, here left, left. So if I put this on and take it out of direct mode, it's now playing out of both channels. Left, 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 left. Um, if I turn it up one notch, it's playing mostly out of the left, but not out of the left. It's like here. Then one more notch up, it starts moving, moving out. So I'm hearing it out of both ears. It's basically a cross feed at this point. And then uh, vertical is just left here. And then one more does a weird thing. It actually comes back and I hear it. Other, so it's, it's, it's soundstage is reduced, but there's this omniscient sound around it. Like it's playing the same sound out of phase and slightly delayed. 
And then the last notch, notch does the same thing. It just increases it. So it's actually closer, but more weird. Like left is happening. Left isn't just left, left, left anymore. Now it's like left, 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 left. left. So it, and this is all analog. That's another thing you got to know. That's why they're charging so much. To do this with a DSP digitally, you could just say, okay, take this signal, then take this signal and repeat it and reverse the phase and put it behind it and delay it. It'd be super easy to fucking do. But audio files are usually assholes. And they're like, no, 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 no. Do it entirely in analog. So IFI does something like that with their bass boost and their 3D effect. That amplifier is $200. This is $8,000. That there's quite a lot. You could buy one of those and take the rest of the money and literally buy, insert your favorite $7,800 device in the description below. The point is that knob doing what it's doing, like making it mono is easy, mono. Then it goes back to stereo. But there are four other settings changing where the sound sounds like it's coming from. And you could choose that. That's why you're buying this. All right, because here's the thing, I left it. Hey, the Drake. Go, go find your brother and... I wish you let me pet him. I'll come here and let me pet you. It's like, fuck off. Um, do you see these green lights? That means direct. That means you're not using these three. So you could turn the knobs all the fuck you want and you're not affecting the headphone out. You're playing direct. That's how I use this for the last four weeks. Just sitting here in the desk under the LA90, next to the Aoun X1S GT, next to the TA22, all my normal amplifiers. Just like, yeah, you're worth $8,000, but I'm gonna fucking ignore you and just use everything. And as I'd reviewed things for those four or five weeks, I'd plug it into this and it wouldn't be that special. Now, I, I mean, come on. Someone's going to yell at me in the comments. Zeus, you were using a Gashelli deck for fuck's sake. Plus, your songs are only flack. You got to have the DSD with the MQA. It'll never say MQA. I think we could all, even audiophiles know MQA is bullshit, right? There's a special breed of person who's into MQA. They're not watching this channel. Um, but okay, so I only have like Red Book quality uh, flack for most things that I have my 24 bit samples folder where I keep everything that's just like slightly better quality. And it's like, ah, oh, demos speak like a child, Mr. Lou. Like, okay, I've got a couple, but, but then what the, the, the fucking Aries two DAC, it's only seven or $800. That isn't even, how are you even going to judge this Zeus? I can hear you fucks already. But here's the thing. As long as I am doing it equally with with no here's the thing i do it with no fucking concern i don't care what you think i open the page because um i don't know where the guy bought this but it, uh, but i'm linking to headphones.com which i do have an affiliate link by the way so if you buy this i might get credit but here's the thing you're not gonna buy it because it's eight fucking thousand dollars why would you buy this certainly not after watching this video so i go here and i, I read the one review because there's only one guy named chip how you doing chip who bought it very recently and he said his friends heard it at Munich. Of course, you'd go to Munich to hear that. And blah, 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 blah. And then discussing the all analog design and the pedigree of its designer and the target audience and the unique, like, its reputation precedes it. And I don't give a shit about reputation. I give a shit if I put on headphones, whether they be $4,000 headphones or $40 headphones, and I enjoy it more. That's the rule. That's the rule here on Zero Reviews. Do you enjoy it? Yes. Do you enjoy it more? Sure. HC600s on a solid state versus HC600s on like a TA26. I enjoy the HC600s more. How much more is that going to cost? More times cost equals wife divorcing you. Because this isn't $8,000 more than like a $1,000 amplifier. It's not even in power either. That's another thing we got to talk about because at the very bottom of this, I, which I scrolled down to, um, you would think that an eight thousand dollar amplifier would be like forty watts per channel. Fuck it. This only states, and I don't know why the font is so garbage on headphones.com for me. I don't know what, every other website's perfect. RMS four watts at thirty ohms, seven watts at fifteen ohms. Those are very low 
ohms. Usually you give me like 600 ohms or 320 ohms. So f let's assume it's seven. And then there's peak 7.6 watts at 30 ohms, 11 watts at 15 ohms. So yeah, okay, a headphone like this is like 15 ohms. This is the, this is the Abyss Diana. But what, where's my, where's my 55 ohm? Where's my 100, what, how, what does it do to a 300 ohm headphone? It doesn't tell you. And then it has 18 watts for 1.5 milliseconds um, at 10 ohms. Because you know all these fucking headphones are running 10 ohms. So it's not even like a, a monstrous powerhouse of an amplifier. I've actually, I brought down, I don't have them, where are they? They're sitting around somewhere. I had the DT880, 600 ohms on it. And I couldn't use them. I turned it up all the way. I had to flip the switch in the back. The switch, you're not supposed to switch. And the switch in the back, you're not supposed to switch. I switched it. And it played, but it was like getting weird distortions, so I unswitched that switch because I ain't fucking with this. So let's let's look at the back now that I've hold on, let's let's just reset all this and let's take a take a walk. Cause to actually picking it up on the desk is like, nah, ma bra. Nah, you're gonna you're gonna witness me, blood bag. So you've got the power connector here, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I had this thing just tucked under here. You don't have to have this in your desk. It doesn't even generate heat. It's like barely above room temperature. Here's your line out. So I've got the XLRs going into the LA90. You got RCA also that'll go out. I'm assuming you could use both of those. Um, then you have your A in and B in here. There's an A through. So whatever you're feeding your A in. By the way, thank you to RI Cable, who's an Italian cable company that was like, we... I'm going to do a really bad Italian accent, but I'm Italian, so it's okay. We're going to give you the nicest of cable. And here they are. Here they are, RI Cables. I'll link them in the description. Thank you, RI Cables. Send me more cool shit that looks nice. It doesn't sound better. Looks nice. Um, so here I've got A through. So that means you can actually output this again to another amplifier somewhere else, and it doesn't do anything but pass through. Your A and B inputs look exactly like this. You've got XLRs in the bottom, RCAs in the top. You have a balanced and unbalanced switch, which I think has to do with impedance and not... Like, you switch it and there's a slight volume change, but it's not like a massive one. And then you have a 0 or 15 decibel plus switch. And I thought that was the high gain, and you could do high gain per input, but that's not it. I talked to Golden Sound because, you know... He's a patron of mine, and I'm a lover of his. And he's like, no, 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 never, ever, 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 unless you're using, like, a phone, a phono output with, like, zero volume, like, ever hit that switch. Never, ever. So it doesn't even have a gain switch. That's just to fix a broken input, essentially. And it's beautifully made, and it's got all this thing. Ah, oh, you 20. So you, you plug in this or this, not both. I would thought you could maybe get four inputs in and then switch it. Although that would still, I would still complain because reaching behind, you'd flip that switch to 15 dB by mistake. And let me tell you, a 15 decibel boost is a lot, a fucking lot. So the, you know what the downfall of, of this unit was? Like the actual, like sitting here in the desk deciding it was T60 Argons, which are hard to drive but like manageably hard to drive. And I had them, still have them coming off of that. So if I switch this and we switch to, let's just say the B and we turn this up. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, that sounds audiophile as fuck. Now I'm gonna switch, oh God, I hope it blows up. Now I'm gonna switch this to output front and back and then I'm gonna do this, watch. Okay. I'm listening to it. Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Uh. Now, again, true audio files will be like, are those a Fostex mod? We don't mod things here. You have to go to the Alps and have someone custom make you a headphone. I'm assuming there's a, a, a race of audio files higher up that I've never met. Or I've only witnessed them at shows and things. Um, nice thing. All these weird uh, soundstage things and bass boosts do work through the line out or through the uh, pre out. So I was able to set all sorts of different settings and have the LA90 deliver it and then back and forth it. That means that you could use this for speakers. 
And frankly, if you're going to spend $8,000 on a piece of equipment that can do something to make speakers, whether they're expensive, and they'll be expensive, or cheap, do something interesting, please do that thing. All right? Headphones are fine for people who, like, can't have speakers. But I have almost everybody I know that can. Speaker, please do speaker. My friend Dan was wearing his headphones for 16 hours a day. He's like, I'm going bald and I hate it. And then he went to Ireland for two weeks and said, hey, I'm stopped going bald. And then came back and went, oh, fuck, I wear headphones 16 hours a day. So now he's a speaker guy. Sometimes it takes just you're physically damaging your body by wearing headphones all the time to realize to stop doing that. Like, I like headphones. I really do, obviously. But if I have a choice, it's always going to be speakers. They're just a lot harder to get in for things and ship for yard sales and set up and use and the environment matters and point being I think this on speakers because I haven't tried it will be fucking mwah. now the other headphone I brought out here because we got to talk about uh, the Shure 1540s this is a pair of headphones I bought after I reviewed I reviewed a set years ago and then I hated it and I hated that I hated it because I fucking love them. And I know what you're saying. Zeos, are you on your pills? You just said a lot of things that don't make sense. This is one of the lightest, most comfortable. Look, they use 1540 pads. Look at the headband with the slot through them and the little pads and they smoothly slide. Like Shure made like the carbon fiber uh, and it uses an MMCX connector, which I don't necessarily like, but I put this DD Hi-Fi IEM 4.4 cable on it. And it's just like, ah. Uh, Ah, oh, oh, they're so good. They feel so good, and you'd play them on anything, and they'd suck. Like neutral to the point of my nose started bleeding, because my brain's just dying. That's how I don't like the way these sound. My ideal goal was to buy, bought them again when they were on sale for four hundred bucks, to gut the drivers out and try something new. And then I found the MT six hundred four, the X Duo tube with the four, the little inexpensive one with multiple volume knobs, and it actually made these sound good. So I pulled them out for this, because if any headphone needs help, this should be the most expensive amount of help. So let's shut off the direct and turn the knob. Okay, they need more bass. Not three notches, just two notches. And I'm gonna take the treble down one, and then I'm listening for sound stage on things. Okay, good. Mono, all the way to mono, and then you click it up, and you go like, all right, ooh, okay. More, back to normal, wider, all the fucking way up. So there you go, I fixed them. Now, I would, if these sounded like this, I'd use them all the fucking time. So that's why you get those. Now, here's the thing. If you're spending $8,000 on amplifier to fix broken fucking busted-ass headphones you don't like the sound of, you might want to reprioritize your whole fucking life because stats backwards. That's not how that works. You just sell this and buy ones you actually enjoy. That said, you could take ones you actually enjoy and tweak those too. It's a tweaking thing. People love, audiophiles love to tweak. Whether that's actually on methamphetamines or not, I don't know. It was interesting when I had the R2R Aries on here and the Gishelli because if you put them both in there's a delay on an R2R DAC like a slight few milliseconds where it's delayed so you put them both in and you would hear the song twice like right after the other so you couldn't really compare I, I, uh, 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 I think I've run out of passion for this not this this event I love being a reviewer I just this unit in particular because I, I know the owner, I like the owner, he sent me so much stuff. And it's just like, I hate to break the bad news. And it's not bad news. It's going to hold its fucking retail value. Zeos on the internet doesn't change the retail value of fucking Zoll equipment. But it's just like, I w if this unit was $3,500, $3,500, that isn't fucking cheap. $3,500? I would give it a recommendation, but he'd be like, that's still expensive, but 3500 Where the flying fuck are you coming up with the extra money? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Like this Black Ice tube deck 
It's like under a grand. It's like six hundred dollars, and it's a DAC that runs on tubes, and it's made in America, but it's all America versus you know Germany, and it is very fucking German. This is actually relatively light too. This isn't like a a million pounds, but I did put it on a piece of foam to keep it from destroying my desk. So it's like that's not bad, and this is pretty heavy, but. I don't know if I'd spend $8,000 to fix a $500 set of headphones. Now, I have a lot of headphones. Here's the thing. In the world of Zeos, this would make perfect sense because as long as you spend only a percentage of what your headphone collection is worth, okay, that might work out. But no, no, no. It spent too much time here and I plugged too many things into it, including IEMs, sensitive ass IEMs. I brought out the um, Dunu Zen Pros, which are $900. And pretty much my most sensitive IMs of all time until I reviewed the Letshore D13s. And then these things, ugh, please go watch the review on Inner Fetish. Zeos, link to the specific review of the D13s on Inner Fetish because I'm literally reaching out and trying to make a collaboration with these because I fucking love them. So these now, extremely sensitive. When you switch those switches, you hear it on headphones. When you switch those switches on sensitive, and I mean uber sensitive IMs, that's when you actually know what the fuck's going on. And it actually like weirds out your brain because you could feel it, like the, it's moving. So I think you understand my, my, my take on this, right? Sometimes things are too much. Sometimes it's too much. This is too much. If this was half price, okay, I could maybe on a drunk night be like, you know what, it's fucking 4,000 is not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's like all the cost of all my dental bills and insurance, but that's fine. I could get by. 8000 is <laughs> Sober Zeos does not approve. That said, it sounds fantastic. It sounds as fantastic as the other things I use. There's it's just, I, that's all I could give you. That's, um, if you don't like that, please dislike this video. Uh, I just, I can't. I don't even like to know the price. People were like, oh shit. Like when I got this, I didn't look it up. People, someone posted the eight gemstones that are going to be in the title. Zeos, don't forget the eight gemstones. So this is the second most expensive thing I've ever reviewed on this channel. Next to the fucking Nautilus, which was the most expensive. <sighs> there's just, there's just some things I can't, I can't. I just can't. I gotta renew my vows for being a cheap motherfucker, and I am a cheap motherfucker, and uh, no. Oh, uh, no. Just no. Anyway, if you like these sort of honest reviews, join my Patreon, where you can see reviews like this early, where you may just save $8,000 for five. For $5, you get to see these reviews early. Participate in yard sales, and uh, listen to all sound demos. All sound demos have now been moved private, and the sound demos now have an unlocked playlist because YouTube's not involved, and they have unlocked wallpapers too, giggity. So there's that. For $10 a month, you can join the behind the scenes patronage chat where the owner of this and the final uh, 8,000s and the Nautilus is, and you could be like, what the fuck to him directly. Um, also, you get into the Swap Me channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear, where if you already own a Zal HM1, you can be like, for sale, $7,899, please send me money. And then maybe you'll sell it there, or best offer. And you're in that for life. Also, check out hi Fat Guides. And don't forget to click my sponsor link down there. I'm doing these universal sponsors. Sometimes it's Linsol, sometimes it's Dakoni. It could be anybody. It could be a pretzel warehouse, but you got to click that sponsorship link there, down here. See who it is. It'll never be NordVPN because I don't like VPNs. Unless they pay me a lot. Then it, then I would do it. Like I would sell out. Like if I sell out, you're going to fucking know. I'm going to have these things vertical holding up like my couch. I just got four of them. And my couch is going to be on top of them. Oh, wait. I don't have any furniture. Can't have a couch. Anyway, wallpaper is also available in the hoard or that little snippet of code you can put into Imgur. You'll find it. Um, anything else we got to talk about? Love these. These are these were brought up because they assess. These are brought up because I hate them, but I love them. And honest to fucking Christ, the the the, the these costs, these forty dollar costs with the really wildly modified uh, Dakoni pads on them, they scale <laughs> so good. D13s, uh, Zen Pros, and yeah, that's it.
We're good. Link to the LA90. Spend $900 on that. And then spend the other $7,100 on um, a used car and then fixing that car and then give the rest to your mom and charity. Good. Good. I'm good. You're good. We're good. I'm Zeos Pantera. Ugh.